joined by James Head in Rhode Island. He's the Lewis and Elizabeth Shirk Distinguished Professor of Geological Sciences at Brown University. Hello there, Professor. How are you doing? It's great Very to be well, here. Very well, thank you. So Tianwen One has spent more than half a year hurtling towards Mars and is now close enough to send us a picture. What excites you most about this mission? Well, I think it's a very ambitious mission. This is the first time China has uh, tried to land on Mars. And uh, in fact, the great success of Chang'e 5 mission, just the uh, sample return mission from the moon, uh, demonstrates that China has really great capabilities. And we're all hoping that it will join other spacecraft there uh, on the way and on the surface, because there's so much of Mars to explore, and there's such fundamental scientific questions. Right. Um, and you have also just described this as you know, being technolo technologically ambitious. Can you give us some context as to some of the milestones um, it's hoping to accomplish over the next few weeks? Well, let's see. So first of all, you have to get into orbit. And this is not trivial because you're hurtling at the planet at a very high rate of speed. So you have to kind of like go in and loop and then enter the atmosphere. And this is very hard. It's uh, mm. very difficult to do. It requires a lot of experience like China has gained from this Chang'e 5 mission and their other Chang'e program missions, the CLEP missions. And so, you know, I think they're getting prepared to do this, but that's the first step. The second step is the orbiter has to go uh, into orbit and then sit there and take pictures and get all sorts of information to validate where they want to send the lander. So this is really interesting. There's a broad landing site that is very exciting uh, and it's scientific promise, but we need to know exactly where to land safely. So there'll be a period of time when they're taking data, and then eventually, probably in April, the lander will separate, it'll go down to the surface, will land on the surface, and the rover will drive off and start exploring the red planet. Right. Now, Professor, one of the objectives is to locate the existence of possible underground water pockets. Uh, is that to determine if there's life on the red planet or was life at some point? This is a really important aspect of it. The, the, the big question for Mars is a search for life. You know, we don't know how life originated. Mars has certainly had a lot of water on the surface in the past, and perhaps it had life too. And so that's the exploration part of it. It's really important. Uh, the Perseverance NASA rover is going to a crater that had once had a lake in it. It has a stream coming in, stream going out. It was once filled with water. This, uh, basically, the um, uh, TN11 will indeed go to a place where there might have been an ocean in the past, a big ocean. It's near the place where the Perseverance lander, maybe a few hundreds of kilometers away, but it's in an even more interesting area in terms of the possibility of an ancient ocean that dried up. So there could be life both on the surface and also life underneath the surface in these water pockets. It seems that Mars these days is getting crowded. I mean, this month we'll see three different rovers attempt to land and from China, the U.S., and the UAE. Why is that? Is that coincidental? Well, it's like anything. You know, it's, uh, it's the reason that Chang'e 5 was so successful on the moon. Uh, Chang'e 5 was targeted to an area on the moon that none of the Apollo missions or none of the lunar missions had gone to, explored, and returned samples. It's sort of like if you said, well, we're going to put one lander on the Earth in China and one in the United States, and we know everything. Of course, we don't. It's a big planet. So the more rovers we get, the better we're able to understand what's going on. And the ultimate goal for both the U.S. and Europe and China is to return samples back to Earth where we can examine them in the lab. And that's the goal standard. And China will be trying to do that in the late 20s. And this is great preparation for that. Maybe the ones at Perseverance will be different. They certainly will be. The ones uh, at, at TN1 site will be different, and we'll be able to decide which samples to get back first and how many to bring back, and it'll be really a great day for international science.